In this lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to approach writing a discussion section for a research paper. So with your capstone, this is the last section of the paper, and it provides a summary of your findings, and it also relates them back to existing literature that you reviewed earlier in the semester. What exactly is a discussion section? The discussion section of a research paper, this is where you interpret the significance of your results in light of what's already known about the topic and relate it back to the existing literature. So we know what about a topic, maybe from studies that we've reviewed earlier in the literature review, but this is where you actually relate that literature to your findings. You also explain any new insights after you've taken the findings into consideration. What exactly does a discussion section accomplish? It does a few things. It demonstrates your ability as a researcher to think critically about an issue, to develop a logical synthesis of your findings, and to formulate a deeper, more profound understanding of your research problem. The discussion section of a paper, it also presents the underlying meaning of your research. It notes possible implications to other areas of sociology, and it also allows you to explore possible improvements that can be made in order to further develop your research. And it also provides some direction for future researchers, areas to further for future research to explore. The discussion section also engages the reader in thinking critically about your findings and highlights the importance of your study and how it contributes to sociology. In terms of how to organize the discussion section of a paper, think about it in terms of an inv inverted pyramid, a pyramid that's flipped upside down. You want to organize your discussion from the general to the specific. You want to provide first a general summary and then go into more detail with each of your specific findings relating them to literature and what it means. You want to link your findings back to the literature and theory that you reviewed earlier in the paper. You'll begin by restating your research problem and answering all the research questions underpinning the problem that you pose in the introduction. You'll also provide an explanation about your findings and how they support broader knowledge or understanding of the research problem. And you really want to draw on literature to do this. You also want to identify limitations and weaknesses of your study and end with a concluding paragraph that provides a concise summary of the implications of the findings. I have a, a, a just a kind of a thought exercise to start thinking about your discussion. Think about what are some of the most notable findings from your project. Next, think about how these findings relate back to the literature that you reviewed earlier in the semester. Do they support that literature? Do they provide new information? Do some of the findings conflict with the literature that you reviewed earlier? What are some of the limitations of your project? If you had more time and resources to work on the project, how could you improve upon it? So I want to give you an exercise also for getting started. Oftentimes it's hard to begin writing the first few sections of the discussion. So just start by begin writing the first paragraph by restating your research problem and summarizing the data that you collected and the overall findings from your analysis. Next, take the next three paragraphs or so of the discussion. In these paragraphs, you want to review each of your main findings one by one and draw on literature and sociology. So find other studies that help you to in explain and interpret your own findings and what they mean. And to do this, just choose one finding. Choose one of your findings and go to Google Scholar and find one or more scientific articles that relate to that finding, because you can find other research to help you in, interpret and explain your own research findings. And write one paragraph in which you summarize that finding, drawing on other research to help with your interpretation. After you've done that, in the next paragraph of your discussion, you should identify some of the limitations and the weaknesses of your study. Comment on their relative importance. To help with identifying the limitations, think about if you had additional time and resources, how could you improve upon the study and make it even stronger? Also, after that, I want you to, in the next paragraph, to think about some of your ideas for future research. What additional research could you do on this topic to understand it more? Were there any unexpected findings that maybe uh, 
give rise to new questions, questions that you could further explore. Those would be ideas for future research. In the final paragraph of the, of the discussion section, you want to provide a conclusion in which you provide a concise summary of how your capstone findings contribute to the literature and theory and sociology. What are the larger implications of your findings for society? 